Welcome everyone. We're so excited that you're joining us. My name is Matt McHugh. I'm one of the high school pastors here on staff. And whether you're joining us from your lake house, your beach house, or wherever you are this morning, in the name of Jesus Christ, you're welcome here. And we are so excited to worship with you. I was buried beneath my shame. Who could carry that kind? of weight it was my time till I met you I was breathing but not alive all my failures I tried to hide it was my time Amen. Well, we are so glad that you are here with us today, wherever you are uh, watching in the world. Uh, we're going to go into one more song of worship. I want to introduce to you uh, Debbie. She is our children's choir director, and she's going to be helping me lead uh, over the next few weeks. So please, please, please join in. Uh, you are invited to sing with us. We love when you worship with us. So we're going to go into reckless love right now, uh, and we just invite you. We just invite you to invite the presence of the Lord into your heart, to invite the spirit of the Lord to be here. Uh, and most importantly, we just invite you to worship with us. We love you guys.
shadow you won't light up, a mountain you won't climb up, come on after me. There's no wall you won't kick down, a lie you won't tear down, come on after me. There's no shadow you won't light up, a mountain you won't climb up, come on after me. There's no wall you won't 
Dear Lord, we thank you so much for this day. God, we thank you that we have the ability and the opportunity to witness and to bring your worship and words to our congregation. God, we thank you so much for them. We thank you so much uh, for them digging into what we are doing, Lord. And I just pray that it's a blessing, not only to them, but also to you and to our communities around us, God. We just ask that you fill this time uh, as Isaiah brings the word. God, that you open our ears and our hearts and our minds. And Lord, that we are filled with your blessings so that we can go into our communities and bless those around us. And then those communities can go out and bless those around them. And it's, it goes on like a ripple effect. God, we love you and we thank you. And we pray the words that your son taught us. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. The phenomenon you've probably heard of and you may even have fallen victim to, cancel culture. I think a better phrase might be accountability culture. Avril Lavigne won't be performing in France, Italy, or Switzerland. Have been canceled. Bridges, thousands of bus canceled here at Bridgestone Arena in March are forced to be canceled. Other big sporting and cultural events are postponed or canceled for the next fortnight. That several shows are on hold right now because of the coronavirus. Being with your family, not canceled. Praying, not canceled. Serving, not canceled. Reading, not canceled. Calling loved ones on the phone, not canceled. Well, good morning, HPMC Youth. I am so excited to be here and, and to be with y'all, whether this is on your phone screen, on your computer, maybe you're fancy and you got it hooked up to your TV. I don't know, but I'm just excited to be here and have this morning with you because I've missed it, right? It has not been the same, I know for me or for Matt, preaching to my iPhone in my yard on an Instagram Live. Um, if some of you have seen some of my Instagram lives, you might have noticed like my neighbors walking through, very confused, um, a few dogs and some construction noises. So I'm just thrilled we're doing this. I have missed all of you and I hope that you have missed us as well because we are so excited to just be back in Tolleson. Um, and even though this is high school Bible study and it's still virtual, I hope all the work that we've put into this experience makes it feel a little bit more like home. Uh, that your youth ministry is still here, we still love you, and uh, though we never expected it to be like this, right, I can't say that I expected when we left for spring break to not be back yet. Um, I think I was one of the people who wasn't super brought up to speed on what was going on, so I was like, yeah, a couple weeks, look at it as a, as a long staycation, Chelsea, and, and we'll be right on back. But that didn't happen, so we've gotten kind of creative right? Um, but as we've gone through this, I know I've noticed in the world that I feel like I get anxious a lot faster than normal, right? Especially with everything happening right now. And it feels like we keep getting some small wins back in the world. Uh, the NBA is getting ready to come back. I could see Luca Magic do his thing, but I'm not getting to see it live. I'm not in the a uh, American Airlines Center. Uh, I was excited that Hamilton dropped, but then I ended up still missing Broadway some more, right? I'm excited to be preaching here, but I wish y'all were here with me. And so it's kind of a weird phase, right? It's like some things are changing, some are opening, but it, it's kind of like the old phrase, comparison is the thief of joy. As soon as I compare it to what was before, I get kind of bummed again, and so I find myself still feeling a little down sometimes, and there's good days, don't get me wrong. Um, I've been staying with some of my best friends, and we have a pool, and we get to make dinner together every night. It's been great, but some days I wake up or in the middle of my day even, and I'm like, hey, God, I kind of miss things. I miss stuff. I miss events. Remember all those blessings you gave me over the years? Can your girl have some back, maybe? Can we get like some 
Corona vaccine already up and running. I don't know, God, like I don't want to push you. I don't want to pressure you, but I start to feel that way. And then I kind of feel guilty about it because right now, more than ever, I, I want to love God like never before, right? I, I want to spend more time with God than ever before because I have the time to spend, right? I wish I was in my Bible more right now. I wish I was worshiping more right now because truthfully, God is the only constant in my life right now, right? The only thing that hasn't changed. But sometimes I feel like that is what I'm questioning more than ever right now. And as I've been trying to stay in the Word and read my Bible, uh, I've found that there's a lot of passages that are really just like standing out to me. Passages that I I never really loved, that I didn't spend a lot of time in, that I didn't spend a lot of time studying. Um, And and in one of my studies, right, I was looking, I was kind of searching around. I think I found, now this is a big statement, it's pretty pretty broad, but I, Chelsea Patricia Pettigore I, truly believe I found the most (laughs) relatable passage in the Bible For at least me right now, I think it'll be relatable to you. Because you see this passage, this passage talks about a nation, the nation of Israel. um, And they're taking a lot of losses, okay? They're they're taking a lot of L's. Things are just not going too hot, okay? Uh, And every time they feel like things are finally back to normal, we're finally getting off track, they get lost again, okay? Every time they feel like things are going back to normal, something goes wrong again. This is the story of Gideon. So Gideon, uh, he's a young guy, maybe not much older than some of you, and maybe the same age uh, as some of you. And, and Gideon's worried. Okay, he's worried a lot. He's worried like all the time, okay, Uh, because his life is just chaotic. So he doesn't trust a lot of people. He's one of those people who feels like, I don't think any other one, any other person's going to take care of me. So I'm going to take care of myself. I have a feeling some of you probably feel that way. Um, And he's worried because he feels like the Israelites cannot stand up to another nation called the Midianites, okay? So he's hiding food, he's kind of hiding away, he's keeping to himself, some could even say social distancing, that might be me pushing it, right? But, you you know, I feel this when I am reading this passage, I'm like, I get this, Gideon. But then, the Lord's messenger appears to him. And, And it's interesting to me that it says messenger, it doesn't seem like, is it an angel, is it a prophet, is it a talking donkey? I don't really know. But that's where the passage picks up. So if you have your Bible, we're going to be in Judges 6 today. Judges is in the Old Testament, and it tells the story of ancient Israel. Let's check this out. Judges 6, verse 11. Then the Lord's messenger came and sat under the oak at Ophrah that belonged to Joash, the, Az- the Abizrite. His son Gideon was threshing wheat in a wine press to hide it from the Midianites. So he's hiding his food. The Lord's messenger appeared to him and said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. This is where it's super relatable. But Gideon replied to him, With all due respect, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his amazing works that our ancestors recounted to us, saying, didn't the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now, the Lord has abandoned us and allowed Midian to overpower us. So, you might be watching this, and you might be like me and Gideon, and um, you're a super skeptical person, right? And so, I love Gideon right here, because he's like, ahem. That's great. Thank you for calling me Mighty Warrior. Um, but with all due respect, like, like, yeah, God's here. I get that. But where? And maybe you're like me, and maybe you're like Gideon, and when things get really crazy and chaotic, you start asking, God, where are you? It's like, I know you're here. I've been told that most of my life. 
but I've heard of the great works you've done in other people's lives and all over the world and in the Bible and what's happening? And, and you know, maybe you've asked God, you know, why isn't the racism in our country just fixed? Maybe you've asked God, you know, why can't we just have a corona vaccine if you're all powerful? Maybe you've asked God, like, please, I just want to go back to school. Maybe you've asked God, hey, I have a family member who's sick. I'm scared. What if they have to go to the hospital? What if they're high risk? Or you felt trapped in your own and where is God because you can't hang out with your friends because of all this distancing. Maybe you feel isolated. You feel alone. And you're sitting here like Gideon and you're going, with all due respect, God, I know you're here, but where? I've heard of how powerful you are, but I want to see it. Because you know what? My prom got canceled. Because you know what? My graduation, it got canceled. Because you know what? Some of my friendships, I haven't seen certain people in so long. Those may as well have been canceled too, right? My lacrosse season canceled. My golf season canceled. My, my dance competition canceled. So yeah, you know, with all due respect, God, like I'm, I'm glad you're calling me mighty warrior and you're here, but where are you? Because it feels like everything good has been canceled. And Gideon asks these questions, and in case you couldn't tell, I've asked these questions too, right? Where are all his amazing works that our ancestors recounted to us? Didn't the Lord bring us out from Egypt, but now the Lord has abandoned us and allowed Midian to overpower us. I want you to know this, okay, because this is important, right? So you have this opening part of this passage, right, where Gideon's speaking, and Gideon is honest, right, but with all due respect. I just, I love that he says that. And he's vulnerable, and he's real, and then the response happens, right? Gideon says these things. And then God responds. It, it really does say the Lord responded, not the messenger. But then the Lord turned to him and said, you have strength. So go and rescue Israel from the power of Midian. Am I not personally sending you? But again, Gideon said to him, with all due respect, he's a very respectful guy. My Lord, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the youngest in my household. The Lord replied, because I'm with you, you'll defeat the Midianites as if they were just one person. You see, God answers Gideon because Gideon cries out to God and is honest with God, is vulnerable with God, brings his doubts to God. And God responds. Like, because you hear me out, right? You know this. Um, trust and honesty are the foundations of a healthy relationship, right? Some of you, um, maybe you've gone through this period where maybe you lost your parents' trust and home is super awkward, right? Maybe you got caught sneaking out, doing something you weren't supposed to, got caught in a lie, I don't know, right? It's awkward when you lose trust. Um, maybe you had a friend you told something to and they shared it with other people and now you have trouble trusting anyone. Maybe you've been cheated on. Maybe you've been hurt in some way, right? Trust and honesty make for healthy and good relationships. And that doesn't just stop at human-to-human -human relationships. That also means our relationship with God. Trust and vulnerability change things. And I think right now more than ever, sometimes we get scared to maybe talk to God and to be honest about our fears, our vulnerabilities, and maybe it's hard to vocalize some of the darkness you might be feeling or you might even be struggling with. Because when you say it out loud, and especially when you say it to God, it somehow feels more real, right? Maybe you found out that during this time your, your prayers have lessened and you're barely speaking to God right now and your relationship with God needs that honesty and vulnerability so that God can turn to you and say, you have strength, so go and rescue 
right? Just like Gideon, go and rescue. You have strength. You can do this. So go and rescue your family that is struggling with distancing. Go and rescue your friends who are feeling hopeless. Go and rescue yourself as you struggle with loneliness. Am I not personally sending you? And I think we're terrified of this, especially right now, because when God says it, we are challenged to believe this about ourselves. And the world makes you and me think over and over again that I'm not smart enough, I'm not wise enough, I'm not kind enough, I'm not pretty enough, I'm not good looking enough, I'm not intelligent enough, I don't have enough money, people don't like me, people don't listen to me, people think I'm annoying, people think I'm awkward, people know my reputation, like... But when we listen to what God says about us, if we acknowledge what God says, we're challenged to believe it. And for some reason, the world has hit us so hard over and over again. It becomes difficult to believe that you do have the power inside you by the Holy Spirit to change this world and to change your own life. So Gideon is like us, right? Gideon literally responds, with all due respect, my Lord, how can I rescue Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I'm the youngest in my household. And that's just like us, right? With all due respect, Lord, how can I rescue my friends, my family, myself, my siblings? I'm weak, I'm young, I'm not the favorite, I'm the youngest, I'm not smart enough, I don't know enough about the Bible, I don't know where to begin. And in those moments, you know what God says to you when you're feeling hopeless, you're feeling lonely, you're feeling that darkness. In those moments where you think you are not enough and that everything's been so canceled that even you feel canceled, Verse 16, the Lord replied, because I'm with you, you'll defeat the Midianites as if they were just one person. You know how I know we're going to get through this, right? Whether we're preaching 30 sermons from here, virtually whether we're preaching 10, you know how I know we can get through this as a church and as the body of Christ. Because God is with us, we can bring hope where there is defeat. Because God is with us, we can bring love where there is loneliness. And because God is with us, we can bring joy where there is despair. Because God is with us, you and I, we don't have to walk through this historic pandemic on our own. Because God is with us, you are not alone. And I know your home might feel like the loneliest place in the world right now. I know hanging out with your friends but being six feet apart might be the loneliest thing in the world right now. I know that if your family isn't social distancing but some of your friends are, you don't only feel lonely but maybe you feel judged, but some of you who are distancing feel judged and lonely. I know that things are dark right now and they're confusing right now. And we feel like Gideon, we're saying with all due respect, Lord, what's happening? But God is with you. And if you don't see God right now, if you don't hear God right now, if you don't feel God right now, I I get it, okay? So if you're still lying in bed, half asleep, listening to this, listening to this maybe while you get ready, you're sitting in the living room with your family, I need you to like sit up and listen. Because this is the one thing I'm going to challenge you to do. Because in your life, whether it's a pandemic or just day-to-day life, There will be moments where you feel like you can't find God. And here's what I want you to do. If you can't hear God, read God's word. Start in Proverbs. Start in the Gospels. That's the story of Jesus. It's familiar. Matthew, Mark, Luke, John. Read Judges and read the story of Gideon. Maybe go into Genesis. I don't know what, but you can't say that God is silent when God's word is waiting to change you. If you don't feel God, listen to the worship songs and hymns that have helped us feel God for thousands of years. And if you don't see God, go outside and take a look around at the world. 
Look at how in the craziness of this, you see families still taking walks together. You see little kids playing with their dogs. Go outside and see the clouds and how they're moving and how in the most chaotic season of life that I've ever lived even, the world still turns and beauty still occurs and nature still moves. Because when you look for God, you will find God. Scripture literally says, draw near to God, and God will draw near to you. In a world where everything seems off and canceled, God's love for you and God's desire to know you will never, ever, ever be canceled. You are worthy of love, and you are known, and God is with you. So you can cry out like Gideon right now. You can turn off this video you can literally go into your room. You can sit and pray. You can journal and be like, hey, with all due respect, <laughs> God, I don't know where you are. But I'm going to give this a shot. Looking for you, trying to see you, trying to feel your presence. I'm going to just try it, all right? Because we don't know what the next few months will look like except for one thing, and that is that God is with us. So we love y'all. We're here for y'all. And we are praying for each and every one of you. So this week, I pray you challenge yourself to look for God and bring hope to one another. Hear these words, God is with us and God is for us. So may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you as you go this week. Amen.